Welcome to this session on reveal preference theory and I am Dr. Manjri Agarwal from Department of Management Studies, Uttarakhand Open University. Learn this theory that is reveal preference theory in detail. Well, reveal preference theory was uh, initiated by Samuelson in year 1938 and further proposed in 1948. And it provides a structural approach to analyze demand behavior. Its main underlying principle is that a consumer's observed choices provide information about his or her underlying preferences. So accordingly, the key advantage of uh, reveal preference theory is that law of demand can be directly derived from the revealed preference axioms without using indifference curve and most of its restrictive assumptions. By simply observing the nature of consumer behavior in the marketplace, uh, such as the bundle of goods a consumer buys, at very prices is all that is required in, in this theory. So in other words, we can say by observing how a consumer buys a basket of goods at different prices, from that one can assess the preferences of the consumer. So as per Samuelson, by comparing the cost of different combinations of goods at different relative price situations, one can infer whether a given batch of goods is preferred to another batch. So uh, this means that the theory assumes that the preferences of consumers can be revealed by their purchasing habits. This theory establishes the existence and convexity of indifference curve rather than just assuming that they are convex. Uh, so because of this, the revealed preference theory is seen as being superior to or superior than or addition to the Higgs study of indifference curve. In other words, if a consumer is observed to have chosen a certain consumption bundle, let's suppose X, while another bundle Y was also available, uh, so for example, because it was uh, perhaps less expensive, then he or she reveal his or her preference for X over Y. Likewise, we can say that X is revealed preferred over Y. In this manner, choices say something about the underlying preferences of the consumer. In this theory, consumer preferences are revealed or you can say assessed from their demand behavior. To get to this, one of the assumptions that need to be made is that consumer taste of preferences do not change substantially in the long run. Hence, it can be said that consumer's taste or preference are stable, particularly in the span of time in which he or she is observed for his or her demand. Now, let us study assumptions of revealed preference theory. The theory is based on certain assumptions. And one of the assumptions is rationality. It assumes that consumers are rational. A rational a consumer or customer will constantly choose more goods and services uh, in order to maximize his or her utility. So as a result, he always purchases the goods that provide him with most utility first, and then he purchases the good that provide him with the least utility at the last of course so in other words he or she prefer a ba larger basket of goods to the smaller ones now coming to the second assumption that is transitivity as per this assumption if a consumer prefer bundle a to bundle b and prefer bundle b to bundle c then the consumer must prefer bundle a to bundle c hence in other words consumer preferences are transitive. It means that preferences are logically consistent and do not lead to cycles or contradictions. That is given uh, the alternative basket of goods A, B, C. So if he or she consider A over B and B over C, then logically he or she shall consider A over C. So this assumption is about transitivity. Coming to next assumption, that is consistency, consumers are assumed to make consistent choices 
over a period of time. This means that if a consumer chooses bundle A over bundle B, when both are available at the same prices in the market, the consumer will choose or continue to make the same choice if confronted with the same options or the similar options or the same conditions again. So this is assumption of consistency. Coming to next assumption that is price inducements. Given the consumer choices for a basket of goods, a consumer can be induced to buy a particular basket of goods by providing him or her sufficient price incentives. So these were the assumptions of this theory. Now Samuelson in 1938 introduced the weak axiom of revealed preference that is WARP. Which, we, which provides a test of simplest form of utility maximization hypothesis. If a bundle X is revealed preference over a bundle Y, then at some other instance, Y should not be revealed preferred over X. So VARP requires the revealed preference relation to be asymmetric. In other words, we can say that if a consumer persistently choose bundle A over bundle B, when both are available at the same prices, then consumer will never reverse the preference even if the prices remain the same. In other words, if A is revealed preferred to B at one set of prices, it should remain preferred at other sets of prices as well. So the weak uh, axiom also holds that one we, once we purchase a thing or a product, we will never switch to another brand or product unless the new one is more superior or more affordable or more convenient or, or of higher quality. So this contends that as consumers, we will consistently choose what we prefer to buy. Now, Houthaker in 1950 generalized war by introducing the strong axiom of revealed preference that is SARP, which states that revealed preference relation is acyclic. Interestingly, he also showed that this gives the strongest test for the consistency of choice behavior unless under the utility maximization hypothesis. So this makes use of transitive comparison between bundles as implied by the revealed preference relation. So this is an extension of VARP and adds the condition that if two bundles, say A and B, have the same set of prices and A is selected over B, then A cannot be revealed preferred to B at any other set of prices. By placing more stringent constraints or strict constraints on preferences, this axiom uh, guarantees that choices remain stable and consistent even when the prices of one commodity changes while the prices of other commodity remains the same. Now there is one more axiom that is GARP, uh, which is generalization of weak axiom of revealed preference. So GARP extends the constraint that WARP applies to pair of bundles of product to include all possible subsets of bundles. So for any three bundles of goods, say A, B and C, if consumer chooses bundle A over bundle B, when both are available at the same prices in the market, then it cannot be the case that at the same prices, the consumer will choose bundle B over bundle C. So if GARP is violated, it suggests that the observed choices are inconsistent with the assumption of rational and consistent preferences. If GARP is satisfied, then preferences are well behaved and uh, one can or you can model choice using a utility function. Now given the budgetary constraint and alternative basket of goods having the same price if a consumer chooses a particular basket so he will reveal his preference. Let us take an example for understanding this theory. Mr. P has a given income which he spends on two commodities uh, let's say namely uh, commodity X and commodity Y. Now suppose there are two alternative op uh, options, basket A and basket B of commodity X and commodity Y. 
both the baskets are of same price or are equally expensive if mr p chooses basket a over basket b then mr p reveals or communicate his preference for basket a so mr p might do this for two reasons either he would have a liking for basket a of goods or basket a is relatively less expensive than the other so now if mr p chooses one basket over the other because maybe it is cheaper than the other one then mr p is not said to have revealed his preference as rationally one will buy good that is of low cost or which is less expensive but he will uh, only reveal his preference when the prices of both the baskets are same or baskets are equally expensive and he chooses one basket over the other because maybe he likes that basket over the other one so let us study through this graph as you can see that along the x axis good x is taken and along the y axis good y is taken so line rs represents budget line of mr p this budget line is same as hicks allen budget line all the commodity basket uh, that lie on like point a and below like point c the budget line is affordable to mr p point a has particular bu bundle of commodity x and commodity y so now if mr p chooses basket a over basket b uh, which is as you can see on the same budget line then it can be inferred or it can be interpreted in the way that mr p prefers basket a over basket b since basket b is on the same budget line so basket b is as expensive as budget basket a if it means that mr p somehow revealed his preference for a as compared to basket b that means basket a is optimal bundle for the consumer at the given uh, budget which means it must be superior to the other bundles uh, which are on or below the line rs so if any other basket below the budget line say basket c is a smaller and cheaper basket of commodity x and y so reveal preference theories accordingly lies on on these observed choices in the market and if cost or price associated with point c is unknown or not ob observed it is very challenging it is really challenging to make a definite conclusion about the ranking related to, to point a so any other points above the budget line say basket d is larger and more expensive than basket of x and y then represented by point a or you can say basket a now coming to income and substitution effects let us learn this uh taking an example for understanding this income and substitution effect along with the derivation of law of demand by applying this theory that is reveal preference theory so initial budget line is given as you can see by m1 and n1 and the consumer chooses basket a which constitute ax1 of y and ox1 of x further all the bundles represented by the different points on budget line m1 and n1 are equally expensive but preferences is shown by consumer while choosing basket a now if price of x falls and price of y remains the same so accordingly the budget line which was uh, earlier m1 n1 will now shift to n1 m1 and n3 so earlier it was the budget line was m1 n1 and now it will shift to m1 n3 and accordingly consumer will now buy basket c having certain quantities of x and y now m1 n3 is little flatter as compared to m1 n1 as you can see in this graph so now this happens due to two effects of price change namely income and substitution effect therefore shifting of consumer from basket a to basket c is termed as price effect let us further learn income and substitution effect of price effect as explained using slutskyan method or slutskyan method now uh, let us redraw budget line m2 n2 which passes through the point that represent basket a 
Further, it uh, can be inferred that basket A is, lit is still available to the consumer. Now, the bundle that customer or consumer selects on this M2 N2 budget line might be interpreted uh, as his response to the change in the price of X. Further, let us learn this diagram uh, to understand the above. The consumer will not select any bundle between M2A as all of these bundles are inferior to him. So using this graph, we can say consumers will not select any bundle between M2A as these bundles are inferior. Rather, he will, uh, would only select either A or bundle line precisely between point A and H on the line segment A N2. If he or she buys basket A, substitution effect will be zero. And if he chooses basket B, the substitution effect will be X1, X2 and income effect shall be X2, X3 that is X1, X3 minus X1, X2. So since the substitution effect in this instance has a positive impact on the consumption of commodity X, it denotes that when X price drops, subsequently its demand also rises as a result. And we know this behavior of consumer behavior complies with the law of demand. Well, the substitution effect uh, on the consumption of commodity X is positive. It means that as the prices of commodity X decreases, consumers tends to buy more of commodity X and less of other goods, which is consistent with the law of demand. The law of demand states that all else being equal, when the price of goods decreases, the quantity demanded for that particular good increases. And on the contrary, when the price of goods increases, the quantity demanded decreases. The positive substitution effect, which we described, aligns with the fundamental economic principle. Now let us learn advantages of revealed preference theory. The revealed preference hypothesis is more practical and scientific than the earlier demand theorems since it does not involve any psychological introspective information about customer behavior. Compared to introspective and psychological methods, the, this behavioristic approach is more scientific making revealed choice theory as an advantage over both ordinal and cardinal utility analysis. Since theory of reveal preference is not based upon utility maximization assumption, but on the consistency assumption about consumer behavior and, its, and this consistency assumption, which I just talked, is a key to derive the demand theorem. So this theory is uh, built on behavioristic method, which is factually or empirically observable in the market. This theory avoids the continuity assumption of utility and indifference curve approaches. An indifference curve is a continuous curve on which the consumer can have any combination of two goods. Samuelson believes that there is discontinuity because the consumer can have only one combination in a particular situation or particular set of situation. Since reveal preference theory is based on actual choices, it provides a more realistic, more practical framework for modeling consumer behavior compared to some other economic theories that rely on assumptions about preferences. This theory also provides the basis for constructing index number of cost of living. So economists can learn more about consumer behavior and market dynamics by examining how customers react to price changes. Uh, now this we have learned it all about uh, advantages of revealed preference theory. Let us also learn disadvantages or criticism of revealed preference theory. Well, the revealed preference theory would be unable to explain demand theorem. Why? Because when income elasticity of demand is negative and it is a smaller, then the substitution effect, then this theory would not be able to explain in, in much uh, clear or scientific way. So Samuelson uh, revealed preference hypothesis also exclude 
the study of Giffen uh, paradox for it considers only positive income elasticity of demand. Like the Marshallian law of demand, the Samuelson theorem fails to distinguish between negative income effect of uh, Giffen good combined with weak substitution effect and a negative income effect with a powerful substitution effect. According to Samuelson, preference can be revealed from a single stance of choice by the consumer and hence there is no possibility of indifference in consumer's behavior. However, in case of large number of observation, technically it is very difficult to discard the possibility of indifference between commodity bundles. However, in case of large number of observations, technically it is very difficult to discard the possibility of indifference between commodity bundles. Another limitation of the theory is that it does not differentiate between substitution effect and income effect uh, because of absence of indifference relation. Although the theory can forecast how customers will react to price adjustment, it might not always be uh, hold true to forecast real customer behavior. Uh, particularly you can say in complex or dynamic or continuous changing market prices. Further, in case of risk and uncertainties, this theory may fail to assess the consumer behavior. Uh, one more limitation of this theory is that the assumption that the consumer chooses only one combination of good uh, on a given price income situation is not practical or realistic. Since a consumer uh, does not act rationally at all the times, sometimes he may purchase due to some unidentified factors or maybe due to his whims and fancies or you can say since his or her choice of particular set of good may not reveal his preference for that particular set of goods. In that case, the theorem is not, we can say, is based on the observed consumer behavior in the market. Coming to derivation of indifference curve. Let's now further study derivation of indifference curve. Revealed preference theory allow us to derive indifference curve from observed consumer choices. The revealed preference theory is able to derive the arguments for the existence of the indifference curves and its convexity. It does not, it in fact, do this uh, by using consumer behavior or a consumer's choice of various commodities at varying cost. It does this by using consumer behavior or a consumer's choice of various commodities at varying costs. The theory of revealed preference does not ask consumers to give the information about his taste and preferences, rather theory enables us to draw indifference curve of consumer by his or her behavior pattern or choice for different bundles of commodity at various market prices provided certain conditions are fulfilled. Now these conditions are consumer preferences are complete or they are transitive which means they can rank all possible bundles of good and that their preferences are consistent over time and consumer prefer more goods to the less one. Uh, let us learn this using graph. As you can see along the x-axis and y-axis we represent goods X and goods Y respectively. Let us assume that initial budget line for consumer is MN which represent various combinations of good X and good Y that the consumer can purchase with his uh, given income and prices and basket A is preferred by the consumer. Now any point on budget line is therefore revealed inferior to basket A. Moreover, all the budget, uh, bundles lying below the uh, budget line are inferior to him or her and therefore it's not uh, these bundles or baskets are not preferred by him or her as they are all are cheaper than basket A. This is represented as the triangle MON in the graph which is marked as inferior zone and it contains cheaper combinations 
uh, as you can see that the area above the line MN is broadly divided into three zones, namely JAK, JAM and KAN. Now the area JAK is preferred area. Why? Why? Because any point on JA show a larger quantity of Y where quantity of X remaining the same. Similarly, any point on the line AK shows a larger quantity of X quantity of Y remaining the same. An area to the right of AJ and above AK shows a basket having combination of more of both the goods. Therefore, any point on the lines AJ and AK and even between them is preferable to A. Hence, in this uh, graph, this area is marked as the preferred zone. The areas JAM and KAN are termed as the ignorance zone. They are termed as the ignorance zone because any point in this area represent more of one good and less of other good in comparison to point A. Moreover, in ignorance zone, in this ignorance zone, it is difficult to assess preferences or choice of consumer or customer. Moreover, in ignorance zone, it is difficult to assess preference or choice of consumer. Hence, to maintain or retain convexity of indifference curve, the curve will pass to point A, JAM and KAM. Hence, to maintain or retain convexity of indifference curve, the curve will pass through point A, JAM and KAM. By rating or ranking consumer preferences in these regions, it is possible to determine the direction of the indifference curve in the ignorance zone. Let us assume that price of X force and price of Y increases. So now the new budget line would be PT after considering income effect. Further, consumer will choose point B or any point from B to T. A consumer or customer shall not choose any point on the BP segment due to consistency assumption being it lies in the inferior zone and any point on the segment is inferior to B. Any bundle in the area NBT is revealed inferior to bundle B. This means that based on the consumer's choices and preferences, it is clear that the consumer rank all the bundles within that NBT area as less preferred or inferior to bundle B. Further, the triangle NBT, uh, which is subset of the ignorance zone, KAN, is clipped off or you can say reduced. The logic behind this is that the consumer has made certain choices indicating a preference for bundle B over any bundle in that NBT area. And there is no longer any uncertainty or ignorance about the consumer's ranking in this specific region. This procedure can be repeated for as many times as many points uh, so as to find the optimal point or best point and accordingly the ignorance zone can be reduced further. It means that the same procedure can be repeated for other points such as point C and point D. For example, uh, if the consumer chooses bundle C, then the analysis can identify the bundle that are inferior to C in a similar manner and the ignorance area can further be reduced. Moreover, the same procedure can be done for the upper ignorance zone that is JAM and to find points in the relation to A. This means that the analysis can be further extended to understand the consumer preferences which are concerning bundles in the regions above the budget constraints uh, constraint that is MN and their relation to bundle A. Now if we join all these points say D, A, B and C then we will get the offer curve EF as shown in this slide. The position of the offer curve is the probable position of indifference curve. This means that the analysis can be extended to understand the consumer preferences concerning bundles in the region above the bundle Moreover, the same procedure can be done for the upper ignorance zone, JAM, and to find in a point in relation to A. 
This means that the analysis can be extended to understand the consumer preferences concerning bundles in the region above the budget constraint, say MN, and their relation to bundle A. Now, if we join all these points D, A, B, and C, then we will get the offer curve EF as shown in this slide. The position of the offer curve is the probable position of indifference curve. Samuelson argued that the position of offer curve could provide insights into the probable position of the indifference curve. And he provided the few aspects to support his argument and these are First, Samuelson's uh, point was that the indifference curve cannot be a straight line like MN. And when the consumer prefer point A, then it reflects that all other points on MN are inferior to A and hence the consumer cannot be indifferent to point A and to all other points lying on MN. The argument is that when the consumer chooses point A, all other points on MN are considered inferior and this is consistent with the assumption that consumer prefer more to less. He or she will prefer more goods to less one. Point A represents a combination of goods that the consumer finds preferable or in the uh, or it will uh, prefer given the budget constraint. In other words if the indifference curve were a straight line like the budget constraint MN it would imply that consumer is equally satisfied with all the combinations along the line, which may not be aligned with the typical assumptions about preferences. So all the points below the budget line MN are revealed inferior to A and therefore indifference curve cannot intersect the budget line, not it could uh, be concave as shown in the graph as PC. Now Samuelson second point is that all the points below the budget line MN are revealed to be inferior to point A. This means that the consumer based on their choices clearly prefers A to any point below MN. Therefore the indifference curve cannot intersect the budget line MN. Additionally Samuelson argues that the indifference curve cannot be concave. Since all the points on or you can say all the points above the budget line MN are revealed as superior to A, an indifference curve cannot pass through the preferred zone that is JAK, individual prefer combinations of good on or above the budget line but not within the zone JAK. Therefore, the position of IC that is indifference curve would be somewhere between the ignorance zone passing through A and the same is depicted through EF. So this what we have learned about reveal preference theory. Now let us sum up. The theory explains that consumer preferences are revealed from their demand behavior. Reveal preference includes both direct and indirect revealed preference. The foundation of this theory is the notion that real decisions made by customers in the marketplace best reflect their preferences. Based on the consumer behavior, this method can also determine the consumer's indifference curve and demand curve. The validity of this whole exercise depends upon fulfillment both, both the weak axiom and the strong axioms of reveal preference and consequently derive a demand curve. So this is what we have learned from Revealed Preference. Thank you for listening. All the best.